if you are a single member LC, you definitely want to watch this show because in today's conversation, I will explain to you how to file taxes for single member LC with no income. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you specifically about how to file taxes for a single member LLC with no income. So, in this show, I'll give you a short answer. And for those who want to understand exactly how the whole process works, I'll go in detail in the long answer. So here is the short answer. So do you need to file a business tax return with no income? Well, it depends. So based on your business type, you may or may not have to file a tax return if your business has no income for the entire year. So obviously this is about LLC, but I want to generalize here so you have a clear idea of what we're talking about. So if you have a sole proprietorship, so even if your business has no income during the tax year, it may still benefit you to file a Schedule C if you have any expenses that qualify for deductions or credits. So if you have no income or qualifying expenses for the entire tax year, that way, then there is no need to file a Schedule C for your inactive business. What about partnerships? So if the partnership has had any transactions that qualify for deductions or credits, an informational form 1065 should be filed. And if your partnership has no income or expenses that may qualify for deductions or credits, you do not need to file a Form 1065. I'm talking about sole proprietorships and partnerships because as a single member LLC, you can elect to be, to, to be taxed as a sole proprietorship or as a partnership. If you have a, a C corporation or S corporation, typically a C corp or S corp, must file an income tax return on taxable income during the tax year unless it is exempt from taxes under Section 501. What about a limited liability company? So that's your case here. So if you're here as a single member LLC, you really want to pay attention. So whether or not you need to file a tax return for an LLC with no income depends on your LLC's tax election. I just said that. Okay, so if you are a single member LLC, you will apply the same standards as the sole proprietorship. And if, if your LLC is taxed like a partnership, you need to apply the rules for filing an informational partnership return. If it is taxed like a C Corp or S Corp, you will need to file an income tax return regardless of whether you have had any income. Very important. And don't forget your state tax obligations. So states have various tax reporting obligations that are independent of federal tax filing requirements. So be sure to check with uh, your jurisdiction to determine whether you must file a state tax return. And if you have a, an uh, inactive business with no intentions to ramp back up in the future, it is always a good idea to formally dissolve your business. So that was the short answer to this question. Now let's get into the long answer. This is important because then I'm going to explain to you everything you need to understand so that you are on the right side of the law when it comes to a tax compliance. Okay. So I, I, I quickly want to go back to what we really talk about when we speak about single member LLC, because a lot of folks are confused when it comes to the real definition of that uh, legal structure. So a single member limited liability company is an LLC with, with just one voting member. You, the LLC owner. This is important. The voting member. Okay? The, 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 the decision maker. That's you. And multi-member LLCs have multiple members who vote on major decisions and share ownership of the company. So whether they have a single owner or many, all LLCs come with liability protection. That means if your company is ever sued, or can pay its debts or a federal tax, 
your personal assets as opposed to the money in your business bank account cannot be seized. So when deciding whether a single member LLC is right for you, make sure to talk to your legal counsel for legal advice because the content, because the thing here is that what we're giving you in this show is meant for general information, is meant to serve as general information. We have no idea the states you're in. We have no idea of your personal situation or your financial situation. So it's always better to seek to enlist the help of a lawyer or some some type of legal professionals. Okay. So you also have the corporate veil when we talk about single member LLC. So the protection an LLC gives you from liability is often referred to as the corporate veil. So this is a kind of imaginary curtain dividing your personal assets and those of the business. But the corporate veil has uh, one weakness, you. So to pierce the corporate veil means you are mixing your personal affairs with your business's affairs. You never want to do that. So in the event you are sued or someone levies your assets and you are you are you have pierced the you have pierced the corporate veil, a court may rule your liability protection null and void. This is why it's really important to segregate those two things. So that brings personal liability into effect, meaning your personal assets are on the line. So remember, a single member LLC is not a sole proprietorship. Even if you elect to pay taxes like a sole proprietorship, a single member LLC is not a sole proprietorship. Unlike a sole proprietorship, a single member LLC can elect how to how it file taxes as a pass-through entity or a corporation. They can bring on more. Uh, they can bring on more members, additional members, and a single member LLC can protect members' assets from liability. Very important to understand that. Let's talk about business taxes. Okay, so paying business tax as a single member LLC. So basically, I mean, and this is uh, I've said this before. So by default. Your single member LLC is taxed as a sole proprietorship. In that case, the IRS treats your LLC as a disregarded entity. That's how they call it. That means that even though it is a legally, it is legally a, a separate entity from your person, you and your small business are one and the same for income tax purposes and file the same income tax return. So this is uh, what uh, the IRS uh, uh, basically the IRS disregards your entity. The IRS takes, they, they combine or they, they, they actually mesh your business and yourself. Disregard an entity. Okay. However, you can also elect to file using the rules for a corporation, a C corporation or S corporation. In that case, you would need to complete a separate corporate income tax return. In other words, you have, let's say, you know, you have a say in how your LLC is taxed. And uh, you can actually ask a tax professional. This can be a CPA or an enrolled agent help you determine what's best for you. Okay. So l let's just break down for you very quickly here the, the basics. So if you want to file as a, so let's say you are a single member LLC with no income, no income, and you want to file as a sole proprietor. If you want to elect that, you are automatic, you are automatically treated as a sole proprietor if you don't elect another status. So how do you file? You report all business income on Schedule C if of your personal tax return. Okay, so Schedule C and uh, your personal tax return is your Form 1040 using your social security number. If you have no income, you actually leave that uh, that box blank on, your, on the Schedule C of your IRS Form 1040. If you file as a C corporation, so how do you elect? You need to file form 8832 to confirm your tax status. And how do you file? You want to report all your business income on IRS form 1120. So that income will be taxed at the corporate rate. If you have no income, which is your case right now, you actually leave that the, the, the section about the income blank on form 1120. Keep in mind, any dividends or salary you earn from your small uh, from your single member LLC will also be taxed as personal income on IRS form 1040. So for this reason, single member LLCs rarely elect to file as C corporations. Let's say filing as an S corporation. So how do you elect? You file form 2553 and you report all business income on IRS form 1120S. 
So if you have no income, which is the case here, you just leave that box blank. So an S corporation is a pass through entity. So you will pay your personal tax rate on all business income. So this is really important to remember. Let's talk about payroll taxes. So how do you pay yourself as a single member LLC? This is important to, to remember because having no income doesn't mean that a single member LLC is inactive. If it is active, but you have no income, then you still need to pay yourself as a single member LLC. So as a single member LLC, if you pay personal expenses directly with your business profits, you will pierce the corporate veil. So to maintain liability protection, and keep your bookkeeping organized, you need to pay yourself through distributions. So single member LLC owners need to cut a check and record it and, and actually put their record in, in, uh, in their books and they have to record the, uh, the payments as an owner's draw, not as a salary, as an owner's draw. You don't need to apply payroll taxes to this draw as you're not an employee. But if you plan on filing taxes as a sole proprietorship, you will need to pay self-employment tax to the IRS. Okay, so hiring employees as a single member LLC. So if you are a single member LLC, you are able to hire and pay employees. As a business owner, you will need to be sure that you are withholding payroll taxes and pay them to the IRS. So payroll taxes include unemployment insurance, Medicare, and Social Security. Okay, so this is important. We have actually covered this on, on other shows of the payroll taxes, but yeah, but overall, there are lots of considerations when deciding the right entity for you to make sure that uh, that you, uh, you don't run afoul of the law. So again, in this show, we are giving you simply general information. If you need specific targeted and personalized information about your uh, your uh, single member LLC, please talk to an EA, talk to a lawyer, talk to a CPA, because uh, rules vary by jurisdictions. And also don't, don't forget to pay payroll taxes also to the state where your single member LLC is located at. Very important because, uh, you know, some states have, uh, they have strict rules when it comes to payroll taxes for companies. This is important. So contact your state authority to have a clear, a, a better idea of what the requirements are for your state. So when we talk about filing taxes for a single member LLC with no income, in, in case you're, you're, you're paying, uh, in, in case you're having a loss, in other words, in case no income means having a loss, then uh, you having a loss but running an active company. And if you if you hire employees, you need to pay taxes for them. Let's talk about something that is really good to know. And I want to break down the, the pros and cons of a single member LLC. This is important. And it's important because if you are currently a single single member LLC with no income, maybe that legal structure is not the right one for you. Maybe you want to dissolve you want to dissolve the the LLC and create another one. Or I mean, yeah. So so th so this is just food for thoughts. Okay, here are the pros. So you have liability protection because an LLC is a separate legal entity. You have the ability to bring on new members. You have flexible federal income tax filing, right? Because you can choose to file as a sole proprietorship or a corporation or partnership for that matter. You can pass on ownership to others, for example, family members, friends. Okay. So those are the pros of a single member LLC. Here are the cons of a single member LLC. You have to file lots of paperwork to form one. So proprietorships form automatically when you start doing business. Okay. So depending on the states where you're in, you might have to also have a, a registered agent service. Okay. You might have to file articles of uh, organization. You might have to do a lot of things. Then you, you might have to write operating agreements. I mean, you don't have to write it, but you, you, you're going to have to submit that to your state department. So you, you might have to hire someone to write that for you. So there are there there is a constellation of uh, expenses. So you must submit compliance forms to prove that you are following the rules, and you are, you have to stay in good standing. So the the state 
will send you something called a certificate of good standing. But for you to get that, you need to, you know, submit compliance forms and you need to make sure that you show the state that you are not running afoul of their rule of uh, the uh, rules and regulations. And you also must maintain corporate veil. In other words, it, you must clearly segregate your personal assets from your per, from your business's assets. Okay, because if you if you pierce the corporate veil, this will put your assets at risk. Very important to remember that. I'll be right back. But right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are also having a, an in-depth conversation about how to file taxes for a single-member LLC with no income. And I, I want to share with you an additional, uh, uh, I think, an additional catalog of important information. So how do you actually, in case you are just uh, interested, how do you form a single-member LLC for real? How do you do it fast? How do, how do you do it, uh, you know, cheaply, too? Well, in order to form a single-member LLC, or convert your sole proprietorship to a single member LLC, you need to do the following. So you need to register a business name. So this is important and make sure that you go to your state's uh, business websites, business platforms, and make sure the name is available, right? Otherwise you'll have copyright, is copyright issues in the future. And you don't want that. You want to apply for an employer identification number. That's called EIN, that's very easy. You go to the IRS websites and it, ha it can happen uh, very quick very quickly and uh, you want you need to designate a registered agent I spoke about that before so this is the person who receives all tax correspondence okay you need to file articles of organization with your secretary of state so the filing fee business licenses and the information you must provide varies state by state you need to open a business bank account so th those are pivotal things you have to do you need to stick to your state's compliance requirements such as filing annual reports, paying state taxes, or submitting an operating agreement. Again, here the requirements vary state by state. You need to abide with all. Uh, you need to abide by all hiring laws if you are an employer. Okay, and the thing is, if you are, if you let's say, if you are scratching, if you are scratching, <laughs> if you are starting from scratch, okay, if you are starting from scratch, it's important to remember those rules. Okay, so. Limited liability companies have the luxury of being taxed in a variety of ways. So this is something you need to think about because it could be uh, your single member, your single member LLC can be uh, taxed as a sole proprietorship. I've said this before, but I want I want to reiterate to show you that you have flexibility. Okay, it can be taxed as a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation. So you have three options. But by default, if you don't do anything. You are taxed as a super partnership because the IRS looks at your business and uh, they treat you as a dis as a disregarded entity. Before we close to this conversation, let's just say let's just uh, talk a little bit about something that's really important. Also, that is related to today's topic. So, can you file an income tax return if you don't have any income? Well, the thing here is that here and here we are speaking about individual income. So in case your single member LLC is a tax as a sole proprietorship, in other words, it is re, it, the IRS disregards that entity. Then you, you're going to have to file, as I said before, you have to file any information on your Schedule C on your personal form 1040. So any year you have minimal or no income, you may be able to skip filing your tax return and the related paperwork. Before you decide to skip your return this year, consider whether it might be worthwhile to file. Okay, so it is perfectly legal to file a tax return even if your income falls below the IRS minimum requirements to file. If you qualify for certain tax credits but owe no tax, you might be able to claim the excess tax credit as a refund when you file your return. So filing a tax return typically starts the clock running for the amount of time the IRS can audit your return for a given year. If you don't file, the IRS can come back and perform an audit for that year. So this is important. And uh, so any year you have minimal or no income, you can skip. So what are their income requirements? Well, they, they, they vary. 
depending on whether you are single, head of household, you're filing jointly, or you know, if you're claimed as a dependent on someone else's taxes. So the IRS also adjusts the minimum amount of earned income from year to year for, for inflation. So individuals who fall below the minimum may still have to file a tax return under certain circumstances. For instance, if you had $400 in self-employment earnings, you have to file and pay self-employment tax. Okay, and uh, so if you have no income, however, you are not obligated to file. And you also have to think about uh, the fact that it's always good to file. As I said before, file now, you can file now and deduct later. So the IRS limits how much you can claim with various deductions and credits. For example, you cannot claim a home office deduction so large that it will, be, it will put off your business into the red. Instead, you, you claim zero business income for the year and carry any leftover deduction into the next year. And you also you also want to protect yourself, as I said before, from future audits. Okay, so the IRS actually has that statute, so that you know it, it, they have a statute of limitations when it comes to auditing old tax returns. So make sure that you file so that you actually are safe. The uh, if you if you file and uh, after three years, the IRS cannot come and and uh, audit your return. They cannot. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was talking to you about how to file taxes for single member LLC with no income. So I give you the short answer. I give you the uh, the, the long answer is uh, the long answer has to revolve around an overview of the of the topic: business taxes, payroll taxes, what you need to know, what's important to know, and what's FYI. Thank you so much for your attention again. Uh, God bless you. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.